for particle physics, now we can look at conservation rules that allow us to find out what's possible and what's not. I like this one here. I don't always understand particle physics, but when I do, I don't. <laughs> That's how a lot of people think. So a conservation is the idea that a property must be conserved. So it has to be same before and after. So for example, these are the, the four main properties we'll be looking at, uh, especially in IB. It's going to be charge, uh, baryon number, something called a lepton number, and something called strangeness. Uh, now the strangeness is not always having to be conserved. So uh, do you see to the side here, I say the weak interactions, and we'll talk about this later, the ones with the W plus minus bosons or the Z bosons, those don't have to conserve strangeness. They're allowed to violate it. But the strangeness will be conserved for electromagnetic interactions, so things that involve photons, as you sort of wingman particle, as I'll talk about. Um, so main thing is that this right here, this, these two tables here are given on your data booklet. So you don't have to memorize these. And look, if you look for your quarks, so you got the U, C, T, look at this, you have your charge for U, C, and T, so the charge is to the left. But for D, S, B, the charge is different, it's minus one third E. Remember, E is the elementary charge. So you've got charge then figured out for quarks, you got charge here. So U, C, T, there's the charge, D, S, B, there's the charge. And just for your leptons, your electron, muon, and tau, uh, your charge is negative one. And for your neutrinos, it should make charge, it should make sense charge is zero because they're neutral. Then we've got baryon numbers, something called baryon numbers. So in this case, UCT, they all have a baryon number of one third. DSB also have one third. Uh, that's good news. Um, we'll see why. Leptons, by the way, uh, they don't have a baryon number. So they have a lepton, uh, baryon number of zero. So if you're one of these particles here, your baryon number is zero, if you want to look at that. Conversely, lepton number. Do you notice there's no lepton number written for the quarks? Good, they're not leptons. That's why, so their lepton numbers are zero. But leptons all have a lepton number of one, except antiparticles. So the anti-electron has a lepton number of minus one. Remember I said antiparticles have opposite uh, properties. Finally, we have something called strangeness. This is a little bit weird. Um, so they're gonna say that all quarks have a strangeness number of zero except one called the strange quark, oddly enough, that one right there, it has a strangeness of minus one. See, that's what makes it strange. Why isn't it plus one? Because it's strange. Uh, what I find interesting is not on the data book uh, booklet is that antiquarks have the opposite sign for baryon numbers. So if you have, uh, it's just it's just nice little things that you might want to know. So for example, if I'm looking at an anti-up, it has a baryon number of minus one third. Uh, the anti-strange quark, of course, if the strange quark has a strangeness of minus one, then I hope you understand that the anti-strange will have the opposite. So it'll have a strangeness of plus one. I love these words, strangeness. And of course, like I said, anti-quarks have the opposite charge, etc. Um, so there we go. We're ready to apply the conservation rules. So now let's just do a bunch of examples. So let's look at the charge of a proton and a neutron. Do you remember the quark makeup of a proton? Maybe you remember it already. You need to know it. So the quark makeup of a proton, let's see. Well, I remember that they all have three things and they end in a down. I remember the neutron is like, it's up, but it's also a little bit down. And the proton is up, up, it's very happy. So there we go. Let's look at the charge for this bad boy then. So if we have U, U, and D, let's see here. I have U, U is two thirds E. So I'm gonna have two thirds E plus two thirds E minus one third E, if that makes sense. Because that's the D, so I'm gonna say, two-thirds E plus two-thirds E minus one-third E. What do I get here? Well, here I get two-thirds plus two-thirds is four-thirds E minus one-third E. So what do I get? Four minus one-third is three-thirds E. So that gives you one E. Good news. It's supposed to. A proton should have a charge of one times the elementary charge. See, it worked. Let's see if the neutron really gives us neutral. It should be none. Let's see what happens. An up is two thirds E, and a down is negative one third E. So watch, I have negative one third E and negative one third E, because I've got two of them. Remember, I got up, down, down. So this is up, down, down. If you look at this, this ends up being two thirds E. I'll just show you all the details here, but you don't have to do it all so detailed. So do you notice that gives you zero? Good, a neutron's supposed to be neutral. So it should have no charge. So Good news, this is all supposed to work out. Let's look at the baryon number for UCT. Uh, so this would be 
Let's uh well, actually I'm gonna leave it for now. I'll just look at let's just look at this something made with three quarks here. U, C, and T. So let's look at this. U, C, T, don't they all have a baryon number of one third? So if you look at that then, I'm just trying to get you practice just so you can deal with these. It means I have one third plus one third plus one third. All three particles. So the baryon number should be one. Good news. Baryons should have a baryon number of one. That's why they're called baryons. So good news, right? Look, remember what a baryon, uh, baryon is? It's something made of three quarks. See, three quarks, baryon number of one, good news. It's like a little switch, it turns on. Yep, it's a baryon. And remember, a baryon is a hadron because it's made of quarks. Let's look at this thing. Hmm, I wonder if it's a meson. It's got an up and an anti-down. Let's look at the baryon number for these. Uh, well, up has a baryon number of uh, one third, but the anti-down, let's see, down has a baryon number of one third, so the anti-down has negative one third. All right, so now we do minus one third. And good news, it's zero. Good news, it shouldn't have a baryon number of one because it's not a baryon, right? It's a meson. Remember, because it's made of two quarks where one is a quark, one's an anti-quark. And remember again, something that's a meson is also a hadron because it's also made of quarks. Just so we know everything here. Uh, oops, here, I've got a real mess here. What happened here? Oh God, let me just, uh, oof. boy, it's gonna be messy. I've just gotta actually temporarily grab these things here. I'm just gonna to try to grab them here because I'm gonna to have to move them. I'm gonna to have to move these particles here. I'm gonna to have to move everything here away. Ooh, this is gonna be messy here. Sorry about that. Because my question got a little bit messed up here. There we go. I'll just move these over here. I'll move this back up here. Let's see if I can fix everything now and put them back in here. So I've got this right here. I don't know. At least this one here I can fix. Uh, this is that particle. And let's just put it down here. I'll just rewrite it then. Maybe that'll be simpler than try to remove it everywhere. Antiparticle of the pi plus meson. And we have the breakup here. It's pi plus equals u anti down. There we go. So then I don't need to worry about these over here. So we'll just ignore those. So what's the quark content of the antiparticle of the pi plus? Well, you're told that the pi plus is up anti down. So because of that, the antiparticle of this, you see that it would be called a in this case right here, I would call it a pi minus. It would have a minus charge. Uh, and let's see what that would be made of. Well, it would be the antiparticle here. So it would just be an anti up and a down. I'm just trying to get you used to this. This is really simple, right? Let's do the baryon number, strangeness, and electric charge for this particle. Anti strange, anti strange, anti strange. Let's look at that. So baryon number of an anti strange. Let's see. Well, the strange is one third. So the baryon number will be minus one third. So let's see here. So for baryon number. It'll be minus one third, minus one third, minus one third. So in that case right here, it'll be minus three thirds. So a baryon number will be minus one. All right. Then we have um, strangeness. Let's see how strangeness works. Well, remember strangeness, you can look it up right here. You don't have to memorize it. Strangeness is, let's see, strange quarks have a strangeness of minus one. Does it make sense then that anti-strange will have a plus one? So because we have three anti-stranges here, it'll be plus one, plus one, plus one. So in other words, the strangeness number will be three. Seems weird, but you can just calculate these things. What about the charge? Well, we have three anti-stranges. Let's see. Well, the charge of a strange is minus one third E. So I'm going to have, let's see, anti-strange will have plus one third E, won't it? So it'll be charge will be one third E plus one third E plus one third E, which is three thirds E, which is just E. So I hope that right there made sense to you. Uh, this is how I can solve these. And I have a final question for you right here. So we have a positive pi on, so we're told this pi plus here. It's a meson consisting of an up quark and an anti down quark. Can you see we have it right here? We're given that. Now, a student suggests that the decay of this thing is represented by the following. So pi plus, and remember the pi plus is really made of an up anti down here, uh, leads to this particle right here plus that particle right there. Right? I'm just rewriting with a u anti down. And they say, is this possible? If not, what's violated? So let's look if we can figure this out. So let's see if we can look at uh, maybe charge. I'm just gonna maybe suggest that we sort of look up all four of these things right here, just to be safe right here. So let's do, we can do charge, 
we can do baryon number, we can look at uh, what lepton number, and we look at strangeness. Let's look at all of these just to be sure we know how to do this. It's good practice, I think. So this right here, we have to look at the left side versus the right side. What's the charge of an up? You have to look it up over here. So charge of an up is two thirds e, and an anti down is going to be one third e, right? Because it's opposite of this. So up anti down is going to be two thirds e plus one third e. All right. So charge will be two thirds e plus one third e. So that should give me one e. That's on the left side. And we have to look at the right side. The right side is an anti mu particle. Let's see what that is. That's C, because it was a mu plus. Remember mu normally has a minus? So the mu plus actually has a charge of plus one e. So we look at that. So the, here we have a plus one e. And of course the neutrino has no charge. So look at this. See this right here? It's conserved. It's the same left and right. Let's look at the baryon number for this. Uh, up has a baryon number of one third and an anti down has a baryon number of minus one third. So that gives me a baryon number of zero. Let's see if that's the same as on the right side. This right here is a lepton. So that has a baryon number of zero. And this is a lepton as well. So look, this is conserved. Let's look at lepton number though. Let's look at this. So the left side here, the up anti down, well, they're both baryons, uh, not baryons, sorry, they're both quarks. And quarks have a lepton number of zero. So the left side is zero. The right side, let's look at this. We have an antiparticle. Remember, this is normal particle is mu minus. That's the regular particle. So this one right here, this mu plus, is actually an anti. This is really the important thing right here, I think. This is actually an antiparticle we're looking at right here. So the antiparticle, let's see what its lepton number is. Remember, leptons have lepton number of one, except for anti-leptons have a lepton number of minus one. So let's look at this. So that means this one right here will have a lepton number of minus one. And this anti-mu neutrino, let's see what that one has. A mu neutrino will have a lepton number of one. But because it's an anti-mu neutrino, it'll have a lepton number of minus one. Therefore, look carefully here. That means here we have minus one, minus one. So do we have zero equaling minus two? Nope. This is violated. That means we know, is this possible? We'd say no. Why not? Which quantity is violated? Lepton number is violated. By the way, we look at strangeness, but the thing is there's no strange quarks anywhere here. So you can strangeness equals zero uh, both sides. So we have zero equals zero. So that's why those are not violated because there's no strangeness going on. There's no strange particles. So you can see which one is violated. That's because this is impossible. And if you look at it, it's because we have an antiparticle plus an antiparticle. That's the problem. See, so this is how you can sort of take a look and see if something is actually allowed to happen. Just be really, really careful and look at your conservation and check for charge, baryon, lepton, and strangeness.